Mike Tyson, one of the most feared boxers of all time. He had some crazy training methods, like this body weight circuit that we're going to give you on this video. It was reported that he used to do this every single day. But if you did this every day, you would get injured. So I've brought along my good friend, BJ Goodall, who is a strength and conditioning expert. He's also the former men's health fitness director. And what he has done is modified Mike Tyson's workout so you can do this and still get the same benefits that Mike Tyson got from his workout without getting injured. So before we show you this great workout that BJ's modified, let's talk about what he used to do. So Mike Tyson was the ultimate alpha male in his prime. He did this bodyweight circuit every day. Now, we made some modifications in a couple ways, which I'll talk about, but he did 500 bench dips, 500 push-ups, 500 shrugs with a 66 pound barbell, which by the way, not a calisthenic exercise. Calisthenic means all body weight, so we're gonna make a modification there. 1,000 sit-ups, and 1,000 air squats or body weight squats. Now what he did, because you know, no one can do that, even he can do it all at once. Right. He would break it down into small chunks of five to 10 sets throughout the day or throughout his training day. So we are gonna change a couple things. One, we're gonna get rid of the shrugs because you know we're gonna go all body weight on this. There's also too much pushing and too much work of the front side of the body, which will create really bad posture issues and open you up to injury. So we're gonna add some pulling movements to balance out all the pushing and uh, it's gonna be much more sustainable for the average boxing fan. Again, Mike Tyson was a next level creature. Yeah. So uh, this will be a great workout and you can do it two or three times a week as a complement to your boxing training. Great, let's go through it. So BJ, let's break it down. We've got this big piece of equipment here, but let's break it down what this workout is. Absolutely, so here's the modified circuit or the upgraded Mike Tyson training routine. We're gonna do three pull-ups, three dips, six rows, six push-ups, 10 sit-ups, or a rollout, which I'll show, and 10 squats. Now that's a circuit, we'll repeat max rounds of that for time. It might start for 10 minutes, then 20, 30, build up to an hour of this routine. And what's be beautiful about this, instead of what a lot of people do, they do max reps. Right. So let's say you could do 10 pull-ups. The first five might look good, what about the last five? Yeah. Tend to get ugly, people start to get the bad form of mechanics. What we do is, we do sub-maximal reps to manage fatigue instead of chasing it, but then we get the same total by just repeating that circuit for time. So what you mean by that is you're only going to do good formed exercises. Perfect reps. When you start losing it, you stop. 100%. Right. We're still going to hit a lot of total reps, but instead of training to failure in each movement, we're doing movements that we could do you know, typically it's 25 to 50% of what I could do at once. Okay, so now let's get into it. The first one, we're gonna do a pull up. Pull ups, you got it. The king of the upper body exercises, great for lat development. And I'm gonna recommend two training grips for this, just for safety. Underhand grip, where it gets more biceps contribution. It's also really safe on the shoulder. The easiest on the joints is the hammer grip. I want you to avoid the overhand grip unless you're really an advanced trainee because it requires a lot of shoulder stability. So I'll go with the underhand grip here to show it. I like to take the legs and block them together. This actually helps you create more core stability and total body tensioning. You're gonna exhale through the mouth going up, pull the elbows to the ribs, squeeze the top. Inhale through the nose to come down. So we're gonna do three total reps of that before we go to our dips. Now, if you can't do pull-ups, a couple modifications. One, I could just do the eccentric only where I will use my legs to just push up and then I lower for about three to five seconds and I keep repeating that. Now with this, is there a big difference between the underhand grip compared to the overhand grip? Well, there is because this position, you get maximum bicep contribution, so you're strongest. Right. When I go here, the biceps can't help as much, so now your upper back has to do most of the work, but elbow out positioning tends to be a little bit more challenging on the elbows and shoulders for people that are new to training, so you can eventually go to the overhand grip, but I would start underhand or hammer grip in the beginning. Okay, so we're gonna do three pull-ups, then we're gonna go straight into three dips. And then three dips. So you can modify the pull-up with the eccentric version we just showed, just lowering only, cheating up with the legs, or get a box, bench, or chair, and put your legs on there to self-assist through the whole range of motion with your legs. When you're doing the assisted pull-up, try to use only the exact amount of assistance you need to complete the rep, so most of your arms are doing the work. So particularly going up, you wanna use more assistance. Coming down, use less assistance because you're stronger on the pull-up on the lowering phase. So we've just done the three pull-ups, now we're going to go into the dips. You know, the pull-up and dip are two of the more challenging upper body movements, so pull to push. Now, Tyson would do these off a bench or chair, and this can be really tough on people's back and their shoulders. But if you have really uh, tight hamstrings, for example, you tend to really kind of round your lower back and it can be very painful. So we're yeah. gonna go with parallel bar option here. And the focus on the dip is you wanna, same type of position as that pull-up, we're gonna inhale through the nose going down. 
Ideally getting to the point where that upper arm is parallel to the floor. <sighs> Exhale up. <sighs> and notice how at the bottom, my forearms are vertical to the floor. A lot of times people come back like this and you put too much stress on the elbow. By keeping the forearms vertical, I'm loading my bigger chest muscles. Okay. So this is chest, anterior shoulder, tricep, where the pull-up is rear shoulder, back, and more biceps and forearms. So again, remind me, why we're we only doing three and three? By doing three, the reps are perfect, so I get more quality repetition. And by repeating this circuit over and over and over again for time, I could accumulate, let's say I did three sets of 10 dips, yeah. 30 reps. If I did this circuit 10 times of three perfect reps versus three sets of 10 where the last like five to 10 reps of that set was not as good or really, you know, form is off a bit. I'm getting the same total reps, but the quality is better on every repetition. Right. So I get a better training effect that way. And I also risk, avoid the risk of injury. You get flawless reps and you can achieve the same total, if not more by cycling in this format. Because you know, the pull up works your back. Yeah. The dip works more of the chest. Okay. So you're actually, you can work nonstop, get a big like total body aerobic workout too in the process by working your full body, but we actually work other parts of the body while we're resting from the pull-up, right? So yeah. I go the pull-up to the dip. So I'm going push, uh, pull to push, pull to push. Then we go core, then we go lower body. So we actually we're nonstop. Right. So it's great conditioning too, yeah. not just strength work. Yeah, yeah. Moving on to the inverted rule. Let's do these, man. So this is basically uh, the reverse of a push-up, working the backside of the body. And also, if you absolutely needed to, you could modify by doing the row twice to replace the pull-up that we started with. And you can use gymnastic strings or a TRX, but parallel bars are great. And we're just gonna get in this position kind of into a bridge, head, head aligned with the spine. I'm gonna exhale through the mouth going up, try to crack a nut between my shoulder blades at the top. Arms form about a 90 degree angle right there and then lower. And again, focus on your breath. The breath will allow you to work harder for longer. If you hold your breath, you're gonna conk out on these fast yeah. and you won't be able to drive the movement properly. So we get six of those guys and you can make it harder by straightening the legs. But we're doing six because this is a much stronger movement. Less of my body weight is involved in the pull-up. When I'm doing the pull-up, the vertical pull, all my body weight's involved. In this one, because I'm horizontal, it's much easier to do the movement because yeah. not as much of my body weight's involved. And the regression on these is to bend your legs, is that right? Yeah, bend your knees to make it easier, yeah. straighten your legs to make it harder. Some people also will elevate their feet on a bench to really increase the intensity. Right, so now we've done the three pull-ups, we've done the three dips, we've done the six rules, and we moved on to the six push-ups. Six push-ups. So. Get your hands about shoulder width apart. Spread your fingers for maximum base of support and stability. I like to block the feet together and squeeze the legs together because it gives you more spinal stability. I'm gonna inhale through the nose going down till those chesticles touch the floor. <laughs> and then exhale up. Hit six of these guys. If you struggle with the push up, you can modify by coming to the knees or elevate your hands on a bench to get a less aggressive body angle. Right, okay. Now with this, does, does the distance of your arms matter? Because I, I know it works different muscles if you're wider to closer. 100%. So if you want to make it more challenging, go with a closer grip, more tricep engagement. Also, now I travel further to execute the rep. You also could go wider if you wanted to get more pec development. Yeah. So wide for pecs, close for triceps, and then the middle is basically the, the classic position for the push-up right about shoulder width. So now moving on to the sit-ups. Mike Tyson said he used to do a thousand sit-ups. That's probably why he said this after a post-fight interview. <laughs> what was the problem? I broke my back. A vertebrae or, or well, a portion? Spinal. Did that in sparring? No, I did it um, by a motorcycle accident. The doctor discovered I was doing my sit-ups 2,500 a day with my 20 pound weight and one day I couldn't move anymore. So we're not going to do a thousand, we're not going to break our back, we're going to do ten. Now again, I'm going to show the setup and I'm going to show the best way to do it. It's one of those movements I don't like doing fast, it just people get bad form with it, but we'll show the best way to do it if you want to add it to the circuit and I'll show modification which I think will give you a better core workout okay. anyway. Classic old school abs exercise. So what we're going to do is get the legs straight and what I want you to focus on doing with this, the biggest mistake with the, the setup, people Think about going forward. Now that really rounds your spine. The best way to think about doing the sit-up is to drive upward. Oh, and that okay. way I'm moving, I'm focusing on my shoulders and hips driving the movement and not as much at the spine. So you'll inhale down. You can even reach your arms like this. I'd also recommend a nice padded mat just to minimize the spinal stress. So 10 of those guys. Now the sit-up is, it's an old school exercise. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. But the rollout, this is like one of the few infomercial products that actually works. 
you block your feet together and you're gonna inhale out and you go out as far as you can, keeping the arms straight without feeling anything in the back and you come back here. Now this is not just gonna destroy your abs, also your lats. Maybe that's hard. It's very hard. So you can modify by just going to face and back, to top of head and back, and then eventually, if you really wanna have some fun, you can kinda of pulse. <laughs> and again, I'm just showing some options. Like there's unlimited progressions on this with the sit up, you can add weight to it, but right. just not the best movement to do fast. Yeah, so we either do 10 sit ups or 10 with the roll Or 10 ab wheel roll outs. Right. So now moving on to the last one in this circuit is the squats. The body weight squat or the air squat as it's called. Set your feet about shoulder width apart and give yourself about 15 to 30 degrees of toe flare. That allows you to kind of get the proper depth and it just feels good for most people versus toes completely straight. And we're gonna do is inhale through the nose into the belly as we reach the arms for counterbalance. And again, with squat depth, this is a big internet conversation point. Some people say go ass to grass all the way right. down. Other people say thighs parallel to the floor. My whole thing is find the right depth for you. Everyone has a different depth based on their hip anatomy, their mobility. Taller people have trouble getting lower, so it's yeah. about individualizing that. So typically, parallel thigh or hip crease just beneath knee crease is good, and then exhale up. And you're trying to think about, a good cue for this, try to spread the taint. You wanna really focus on spreading your hips so you don't get too much forward knee drive. And 10 of those guys gets a good pump into the legs. And again, because your legs have so much muscle mass, it becomes like a whole body metabolic exercise too. Yeah, no, that's great. Real quick, I'm stopping the video, putting my coat on, going into the garden and telling you about today's sponsor. Now I wanna give you a supplement for free and that is Onnit Alpha Brain. I first heard about this from UFC commentator, Joe Rogan, who swears by it. So I thought, well, if it's good for him, it'll be good for me and I take it and it is fantastic. This really helps support my memory, my focus, my creativity, everything like that. And I also like to take it before workouts as well. So check it out. Click the link below, get 15 days free trial of Onnit Alpha Brain. Also go to onnit.com forward slash boxing and you get 10% off their entire website. Check it out guys, you're going to love it and you can thank me later. Now we've went through it, I've got to read it off here. We've done the three pull-ups, three dips, six rows, six push-ups, 10 sit-ups and then the 10 squats. Now we've just went through all of that. And I go right back to the pull-ups. So I would just take that circuit we just did of these six movements and you set the clock for 10, 20, 30 minutes, up to an hour for really advanced trainees. See how many total rounds of this circuit you can get done for time. And then the goal is you try to beat that performance the next time you do it. Not necessarily every session, but definitely from month to month, you should be getting more total rounds of this circuit in the same amount of time or less, which means more density, more training density, more work done, per unit of time, which means you're gonna burn fat, build muscle, and be in better condition. Okay, so with Mike Tyson doing like 500 of these, that's, or like he did like 500 push-ups in a day. For sure. That was like throughout the full day. Would you recommend doing this like a couple of times a day to try and up that, like Mike Tyson? 100%, you can break it into just a dedicated training session like we just talked about for time, or say every hour on the hour, right. I'm gonna hit one round of, these, of this circuit. So at the end of the day, say you do 10 times every hour on the hour during your work day, that would have been 30 pull-ups, 30 dips, 60 rows, 60 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and 100 squats. And for the average person, that's, that's a great full body workout of the course of the day. So you can do it all at once for time, or you can break it up and kind of pepper it in throughout your day. Long term, you could eventually add a weight vest to make this harder. You just double the reps on every one of these movements right. to make it more challenging. Yeah, so yeah. you've got a lot of ways to make it easier or harder. And this is a circuit you could really build upon for many months and to come. And the benefits of doing this is just gonna get you overall fitter and stronger. 100%, this is a full body workout. You've got four upper body movements, which all are very core intensive. We have a core exercise and we have a lower body exercise. So it's a little upper body heavy, but it's the best uh, modified Tyson workout for the average person. And again, it's got a good training balance and it's a workout that you know could scale up or down for most people. These exercises are great, but they're not specific to punching harder. For exercises to punch harder, Click here and watch this video next where we show you all of the exercises you need to improve your power punching.